Okay, thank you very much. Um, dear EFB family, I'm Deniz Fındık Balcı. I'm from Yeditepe, Istanbul. And today I'm very excited and I feel very privileged to be a panelist of the symposium. Being the last, but certainly and hopefully not the least panelist, I will explain the professional interventions for suprogingival dental biofilm control and risk factor control during the fourth step of therapy, which is supportive periodontal care. The first intervention is professional suprogingival dental biofilm control. This intervention is composed of three questions. The first question is the value of professional mechanical plaque removal as a part of supportive periodontal care. From this point onward, I will use the abbreviations PMPR and SPC. The supporting literature is Trombelli's effect of professional mechanical plaque removal performed on a long-term routine basis in the secondary prevention of periodontitis, a systematic review. The other two questions are on the use of alternative methods and adjunctive methods during SPC. The supporting literature is Trombelli's literature, which you can see on the right-hand side. As oral health professionals and periodontists, what we aim to do every day is prevent and treat diseases which are caused by microbial dental plaque biofilm. As mentioned numerously during this panel, to achieve our goal, the microbial dental biofilm should be removed. The systematic review on this first question focuses on the clinical effect of routine PMPR for secondary prevention of periodontitis in patients who have already been treated for this disease. The aim is to evaluate the efficacy of long-term routine PMPR for preventing the progression of periodontitis. For this, prospective studies were identified. These included randomized clinical trials, quasi-randomized trials, and non-randomized studies. All the patients included in the study were 18 years of age or above, and only studies where the data represented the entire dentition was included, which meant only studies considering the patient as a statistical unit for analysis was included. Minimum follow-up was three years for SPC following active periodontal treatment. The primary outcome was tooth loss. Out of 17,449 articles, 19 articles from 19 studies were identified. No intervention was found which compared the efficacy of PMPR in supportive therapy. There was not a study in which a group received PMPR and one did not. Results show that no to low incidence of tooth loss was observed and the mean clinical attachment loss was less than one millimeters. So a specialist and specialists in the making who have devoted their entire lives to preventing tooth loss or clinical attachment loss, regular supportive therapy may be the magic wand. I also would like to highlight the fact that the importance of the level of patient adherence has been stated as being very important for the stability of the dentition and periodontal parameters repeatedly in the systematic review. When we look at the guideline, we see that PMPR is suggested to be done during SPC in order to limit tooth loss and provide both periodontal stability and improvement. Since the data was very heterogeneous, meta-analysis was not possible. It has also been proven that long-term adherence is possible and this is applicable to the general population. The focus question for the next two questions is as follows. What is the efficacy of either alternative? And by alternative, we refer to RBMIAC lasers being used alone, and one study was included, or additional methods. And by additional methods, we refer to the efficacy of daily sub-antimicrobial dose of doxycycline and photodynamic therapy with methylene blue photosensitizer and a diode laser with a wavelength of 660 nanometers. And again, one study was identified for each adjunctive intervention. 
the primary outcome measure was clinical attachment level. And the results show that if RBMIAC lasers are used routinely during PMPR, attachment levels may be kept stable and the results compare similarly to the attachment levels achieved through routine PMPR done with the combined use of ultrasonics and hand instruments. Regardless of the use of subantimicrobial dose of doxycycline, routine SPT regimen will lead to clinic clinical attachment level stability as we have discussed in the previous section. The magnitude of clinical attachment level gain was not enhanced by the use of photodynamic therapy. The results of the meta-analysis did not show any statistical differences in clinical attachment level change from baseline. So, in simpler words, adjunctive methods do not provide any additional benefits. However, here we should also emphasize the fact that the number of studies was very low and the strong conclusion cannot be drawn from this data. Neither the use of Erbimiac lasers nor SDD or PDT, or in other words, alternative or adjunctive method, do not produce a greater clinical effect on periodontal conditions compared to PMPR. In the guideline, we can see that the use of RBMIAC lasers as alternatives to PMPR is not suggested. The cost-benefit ratio of PMPR performed with mechanical and hand instruments are well supported by the existing literature. Taking into consideration that RBMIAC lasers may be considered relatively very, very expensive, it should be stated that there are no cost-benefit or cost-effective analysis currently available for RBMIAC laser applications. Further studies which fulfill the requirements are needed to be included in a future meta-analysis. The use of adjunctive methods are not suggested in the guideline as well. Cost-benefit or cost-effective analysis are missing and they may be very important when this treatment approaches are considered. Reflecting back to this intervention, I would like to briefly explain what we do in Yeditepe. We use the program PerioLine to assess the required recall intervals of our patients. The program bases the recommended intervals based on the paper of Lang and Tonetti. Once we have our patients in our clinic for SPC, we routinely perform PMPR with hand instruments and ultrasonic devices. Of course, we also update the medical and dental history of our patients, repeat oral hygiene instructions, and recommend appropriate oral hygiene instruments, motivate our patients, and promote a healthy lifestyle, including smoking cessation interventions. In our clinics, both RBMIAC lasers and diode lasers are currently present. However, we do not perform PDT or use RBMIAC lasers for PMPR on a routine basis. We also do not prescribe subantimicrobial dose doxycycline. I also would like to state that these products are not available on the market at Turkey at the moment. The second intervention I will present is the risk factor control during SPC. There are four questions to be answered for this intervention. The value of risk factor control in SPC, the role of interventions done for smoking cessation, promotion of diabetes control, to increase the physical exercise level of the patient, referring the patient for dietary counseling or lifestyle modifications aiming at weight loss. The literature supporting this intervention is by Ramshire. It is known that periodontitis patients benefit from additional risk factor control interventions for maintaining periodontal stability. The needs of the patient may be different from one patient to another. We may need to briefly advise our patients, refer our patients for advanced counseling and or for pharmacotherapy. Smoking and diabetes are two main risk factors for periodontitis. We know that they are included at the grading part of our classification. 
it will be correct to state that controlling these risk factors are very important for treatment response of our patients and the long-term stability of their dentition. Both widely accepted guidelines and studies were identified to assess the way these interventions affected periodontitis patients. Electronic systematic searches were done and 13 guidelines and 25 studies were selected. The results showed that smoking cessation and diabetes control improve periodontal health. The impact of dietary interventions and the promotion of other healthy lifestyles were moderate to limited. Today, we know that interventions done for smoking cessation and diabetes control can benefit our patients and our behavioral support is very important during periodontal care. I would also like to share a statement by World Health Organization, which was included in the systematic review. The management of non-communicable diseases as a growing global burden requires all healthcare providers to tackle these issues altogether. And here, I would like to remind you that even though it is not our direct responsibility sometimes, as dental professionals, we should never forget that we are healthcare providers in the first place. And I believe that we should always feel responsible to play an active role to make the health status of our patients better. When we look at the guideline, we see that risk factor control in SPC is recommended. Smoking cessation interventions being implemented during SPC is also recommended during supportive periodontal care. In Yeditepe, what we do in our clinics is starting a conversation with our patients who are smokers. We provide them with tools, brochures, and pamphlets to motivate them to quit. If they're interested in doing so, we refer them to our university hospital where they can get help through acupuncture and bioresonance. And also, if they wish to do so, they are referred to the free of charge government call line where they will be encouraged, motivated to quit, and if needed, will be referred to a government hospital, again, free of charge. When we look at the guideline for diabetes control, we can see that it is suggested for us to promote diabetes control during SPC. In our clinics, when we feel that it's necessary, we refer our patients for blood tests. And after we get the results, if we feel that it's necessary, we refer our patients to government hospitals or our university's hospital where they can get the help they need. Regarding the role of physical exercise, dietary counseling, lifestyle modifications aiming at weight loss, today we do not know if these modifications are relevant in supportive periodontal care. However, in Yeditepe, what we always try to do is motivate our patients to eat better, lose weight if it's necessary, and exercise more. Because we always remember the World Health Organization statement and we never forget that we are healthcare providers in the first place. On behalf of our department, I would like to thank you all for your kind attention.